Here in the last week or so, I've really spent a lot of time working on what I'm calling DTOS, which is DT's operating system. It's basically going to be a deployment script so you guys can have my Xmonad desktop environment. You're going to have my Xmonad config with my Xmobar. You're going to have Doom Emacs, of course. You're going to have several shells installed on the system, including the Fish shell, which is my favorite. You're going to have the Alacrity terminal already configured to my liking. And it's going to be essentially DT's computer on your computer. So I've spent a few hours every day for the last week really working on this and it's not necessarily a script that is the problem. Anybody can write a quick deployment script that clones your .files repository and then just splats that thing out onto somebody's home directory. I can do that in like five minutes. But I wanted to do this thing the right way because eventually I want to build a proper ISO so we can actually release an ISO, a proper Linux distribution. And a proper Linux distribution, of course, needs a repository of software. That's how you deploy this stuff. So I created DTOS-Core-Repo. So our own repository of software, I've got it hosted over on my GitLab. And uh, some of the packages may or may not work. So right now, even though they're public repositories, because I have them public so I can test them out. I don't recommend you guys using this just yet. I'll, I'll make an announcement when I, I feel like things are ready. Right now, I'm not publishing any kind of deployment script publicly yet because things may break. You know, I, I'm testing things out in a VM today. But here, what I'm doing today is I'm actually going to run through a very early rendition of the deployment script in a VM. I spun up a quick VM of Arch Linux. I ran through like the base install of Arch Linux, which takes like 10 minutes. And then I'm going to try out my deployment script and see if it actually works. So let me switch over to the VM of Arch Linux. I installed DWM as a window manager. That way I had a graphical environment to log into. And I'm going to do a git clone. I'm going to clone this private repository of mine over at gitlab.com slash dwt1. That's DT's GitLab, of course. DTOS is the name of the repository. And again, this is a private repository, so unless you have uh, my password, then there's really nothing you can do with it. So it's just for me. When it's ready for public consumption, of course, I will share this with you guys. But right now, the script is going to have errors. I know it's, it's going to have a lot of errors, and it could be potentially dangerous. That's why I don't want to put it out there publicly just yet. Anyway, now that I've cloned that repository, you see in my home directory now, when I do a ls, I have dtos here. That's the only directory in my home directory at the moment. I'm going to cd into that, and you have dtos.sh. If I open that in Vim, you guys can actually see the script. The very beginning of the script, we check if our user ID is zero, but that means you're the root user. I don't want you to execute this as the root user. So if you are the root user, it actually will not let you run this script. And that's for safety reasons, because later in the script, I'm going to call on variables such as dollar sign home, you know, your user's home directory. Now, well, the root user, his home directory is, of course, slash root. I don't want to play around in slash root, right? So that is why I make sure that you run this as a normal user, not the root user. We get a, some welcome information here, and then we play around a little bit with pacman.conf. What we need to do is we need to add the DTOS core repositories to pacman.conf, and then we need to add our key servers to gpg.conf. And then later, what we need to do is receive my keys, so my packages that I build, have a key, right? And then you can't actually install those packages unless you trust that key. So that is what this information here is doing. And then once once we've added the DTOS core repositories and the keys, then we run a sync of the repositories with pacman-sy. And then I've got this very long array of software here, including many packages that are DTOS packages from the DTOS core repository. And then this array is going to get fed into this for loop here. So what we're going to do is for every package in this array, I want you to run that through sudo pacman dash s. So install, right? I give it this flag dash dash no confirm because if you don't do that, after every single package it tries to install, it's going to ask you yes or no. Do you really want to install it? That's annoying, right? So give it dash dash no confirm here. And then we install Doom Emacs. We install Doom Emacs the old fashioned way where we clone Doom Emacs and then we run Doom install. I was I was toying with the idea of actually packaging Doom Emacs as a binary and hosting it in the DTOS core repository. I couldn't get a binary package to work, at least not yet. So right now I'm just going to do the GitHub install for uh, Doom Emacs, and that actually takes a few minutes. I warn you guys that it takes a few minutes here in this echo statement, just so people are not wondering why Doom Emacs takes, you know, five to ten minutes to build. 
The next section says we're going to copy the DTOS configuration files over from slash Etsy slash skill into home. And so what we're going to do here is all of my DTOS packages like DTOS dash xmonad, for example, or my xmonad configs. Where do I place them? Well, I don't just place them in your home directory because you may not want to overwrite your own xmonad configs. I actually place them in slash Etsy slash skill. And then you can go into slash Etsy slash skill, find dot xmonad in that directory and copy that over to your home directory if you want my xmonad configs. But if you're running this deployment script, obviously you want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything from slash Etsy slash skill into your home if you run this deployment script. So again, make sure that you actually want my xmonad desktop before running this script. And then all we're going to do after that is recompile xmonad and then you get an ex exit message and that is it. So the script itself is not very complicated. It's, you could probably write a script like this in about 10 or 15 minutes, but what has been taking me hours and hours every day is trying to figure out what packages I actually want in my repository. I've got to create package builds, and then I build binaries, assigned binaries, and then I add it to the repository. That's really the tedious part, is actually maintaining packages and trying to figure out what all I need packaged, because I, I don't want to... One thing about this script is I don't install anything from the AUR in the DTOS shell script. What I'm doing is if there's an AUR package that's not in the core repositories and I need, I'll package it myself and put it in the DTOS repository. So that's why on, in that script we're only using Pac-Man. We're not using Yay or Paru or anything like that. And I was really trying to avoid using git clone for anything. I don't want to go clone any repositories. The one exception I'm making right now is Doom Emacs, but I'd like to figure out how to package Doom Emacs as a binary eventually. So let's run the script and see if it works. I'm going to chmod plus x to make DTOS executable. And I, I, this script probably will not work. I have not got this thing to run without errors yet. And I, I know I'm getting close, so I'm just going to run this one on camera and see what happens. So let's go ahead. All right, this is the welcome screen. It just tells you a little bit about DTOS. I'm going to hit OK. Stay near your computer because you're going to need a root password. So Pac-Man's going to ask you for a root password. Uh, pretty much as soon as you begin the installation. And then are you sure you want to do this? You can exit if you're unsure, or you can begin installation. And then of course the first thing, add a password here because we're going to start editing some important files like slash Etsy slash pacman.com. So give it your root password. So I added DTOS core repositories to pacman.com. I added the key servers to gpg.com and then we're installing all of our software. And uh, we're getting some warning messages because some of these packages were already installed, so it doesn't reinstall them. It just skips them. That's fine. And then we're installing Doom Emacs, and this portion of the installation actually will take about, I don't know, five or ten minutes. So I'm going to pause the video for a few minutes. I'll be back once we get near the end of the Doom Emacs installation. It looks like it's getting close to the end of the Doom Emacs installation. Uh, it's asking, do I want to install all the icons? So that's fonts for Doom Emacs. This is one of the reasons why uh, problem, one of the problems with packaging Doom Emacs as a binary is it's interactive. There's a couple of yes or no questions during the installation. It says installation complete, so it looks like the script actually completed just fine. Of course, the moment of truth is to actually quit out of DWM and log into Xmonad. All right, I installed SDDM for a display manager. I'm going to choose Xmonad, and let's see if we log into my Xmonad desktop. So we actually did. So it did install my wallpapers, and it set one of them. It also launched Trayer, which is our sysTray. It did not launch Xmobar. I know why it doesn't launch Xmobar. It's going to be a font problem that would probably be easily corrected, but Alacrity is here. Alacrity with the Starship prompt. It also installed my Shell Color Scripts program where we get a random Shell Color Script. Let me go ahead and make the uh, screen resolution a proper 1920 by 1080. So the script is getting close, right? That That's uh, some of the problems left now. This uh, are easy to solve. I just need a little more time. You guys keep asking about it. The work involved, what's really taking, of course, the largest amount of time is, of course, I, I talked about packaging software. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about with packaging software. So let me switch over to the desktop here on my real computer. That's not the virtual machine. If I go to my GitLab, I'll show you. I've created uh, some repositories, for example, DTOS-package builds and DTOS-core repository. 
So package builds, of course, are the package build files. And these are all the package builds for packages that I'm maintaining. And once I build these, I created a script to automatically build these packages, right? And then once they're built, I send the binaries to this repo, dtos-core repo. And there's the binary packages as also uh, the uh, sig files as well because they're signed files. So this is really what I've been working on the last week or so. We're getting pretty close here. I've packaged most everything that I, I think we need at this point. The last thing I need to do is just tidy up some of the, you know, one of the things I need to do is figure out exactly what packages we're missing. Like XMOBAR obviously did not work and when, when I ran the script. The script actually completed, which is was a first for me. I'm glad we got to share that on camera, but still XMOBAR is a little buggy. It's going to be a font problem. What it is, is XMOBAR is really picky about if you use fonts that are not installed on the system, it won't la launch. Or if you use glyphs that your font doesn't support in the config, it won't launch. And of course my XMOBAR, uh, if I show you, you know, it's actually got a lot going on with it as far as Unicode glyphs and that's going to be the, the issue that I'm going to have to clean up here. But the fact that I got the installation script uh, kind of to work this time, I figure uh, we're, we're just a few days away from a public launch. Give me another, I don't know, a, a week or so and we'll go ahead and, and put this on a public repository on GitLab for you guys to try out. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Epsy Gabe, James Mitchell, Paul, Scott West, Akami Allen, Chuck Kirk, David Dunn, Gregory, Heiko, Mike, Erjan, Alexander, Peace Arch and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Scott, Red Prophet, Stephen, Willie, I, I don't know why I said Scott two different times, but all these guys, these are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about the upcoming release of DTOS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to help me out, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Find a package maintainer and give him a hug.